Hello guys, so uh, welcome back to my stream again. Uh, today we have this short flight from Prague Airport. Uh, I guess uh, we can make it to, for example, Wien Airport uh, because uh, I would like to explain you uh, the light system of the Boeing 737 and um, uh, this light system is mainly focused for those of you who would like to know uh, how to properly use the old style, sc old school, or uh, let's say old style system with uh, retractable or, or let's say outboard light system, uh, so called in classics. Um, so, uh, this is the lovely, uh, beautiful uh, livery with travel service. So, we jump into the cockpit, and first of all, uh, we will explain the emergency lighting system in cockpit. So, once we are in the cockpit, uh, we put the battery switch to on position. When you put battery switch to on position, uh, um, it behaves like uh, you have two generators lost and the only source of light is float lights, which is floating to your uh, captain instruments and primary flight display instruments. Uh, you can also switch on the dome lights. Uh, Mm, just for an example, uh, but um, this is uh, the only case um, when you have uh, emergency equipment light, uh, oh, sorry, uh, yes, uh, emergency exit light uh, into the off position, okay? So once we have uh, emergency light in on position, a uh, few things uh, will change and uh, I will show you which things change, okay? So, uh, we put the emergency light back to off position and uh, go into the outside view and if you can see uh, the emergency exit light are located here, here and uh, under the overwing, overwing exit. Uh, these lights which are located uh, into the aft uh, servicing door and forward servicing, servicing door and uh, forward and forward uh, entry door and aft entry door uh, are illuminated only when slides are inflated. So, uh, if you are securing the airplane properly, uh, you have to put this emergency light uh, into off position because uh, if you don't secure the airplane with the proper way and you put it like this one so leave it in on position and then you switch off the battery uh, you came out of the cockpit uh, you, you can see right now that emergency exit lights uh, are shining and what does it mean? Uh, it means uh, that uh, your battery could discharge uh, during overnight airplane and uh, you have a trouble uh, because you have to charge the battery and delay your start uh, because the APU is not available for you because APU source uh, start um, because APU is starting from the battery. Okay, so uh, this is a discussion uh, of the emergency exit light which are in the cockpit, and this is the discussion uh, which uh, are the emer emergency light uh, in the. Uh, in the exterior side of the airplane. So, um, <coughs> uh, so once again, uh, we'll leave it off like this now. Okay. And now you can see the lights are not shining. If we put it into the on position and switch off the battery and leaving the airplane, emergency exit lights are, are shining for you. Uh, so um, this is uh, uh, so this is the uh, this is the emergency exit light. And in cockpit, it's valid uh, that. Uh, uh, with the battery switch on in on position, 
uh, you have uh, the emergency floodlight and if you wish uh, the dome light is available for you as well um, so okay so uh, uh, let's jump uh, I will skip the preliminary procedures uh, right now uh, because it's unnecessary uh, for this type of flight and uh, we'll make the preparation uh, in a way uh, how we are not doing in real life but um, uh, let's say it's just for our flight uh, training uh, purpose demonstration and we will start with all the cockpit lights uh, which are available here and uh, and uh, uh, and uh, and we will see how it is works because I have uh, um, I have some problem with uh, uh, with the uh, uh, with the towing track, uh, so we will see uh, uh, later on. Okay, so I resist in on position. Uh, assume that uh, we are, uh, for example, uh, making a ferry flight, and we are taking, uh, let's say, uh, three crew members. Uh, so that means uh, two. Uh, three crews so that means that uh, it's uh, basically uh, eight uh, uh, two, two uh, forward cabin uh, two aft cabin and two pilots are six uh, multiplied by three it's 18 person on board so uh, we can make it uh, like this one like uh, very quick action uh, we can put six tons it's uh, pretty and uh, very well enough uh, for our flight uh, we can make it uh, with a payload as I said before uh, 80 packs on board and um, in the real airplane uh, you should have some spare parts over the aft compartment uh, if, you, if you leave it empty uh, sometimes the low cheat uh, it's uh, it's uh, very uh, very aft, and uh, you have a problem with the uh, uh, with the um, uh, uh, with the uh, CG uh, while landing because it's it's uh, too much into the aft compartment. I hope it the the steering will be um, okay, uh, but anyway. Uh, if not, uh, I will skip the video, I will reposition myself and uh, then you can uh, see the things right now. So, cockpit lights. Uh, cockpit lights are basically, uh, uh, all of the cockpit lights are according to pilot liking. So, if the pilots like to have it dim, uh, should be dim, if they are like uh, to have it bright, it should be bright, but uh, exception is low visibility procedures when it's highly recommended to use these lights uh, into the dealing position so we start with overhead panel and as you can see on the overhead panel uh, there is a floodlight of the circuit breakers you can see it's shining right now and uh, it's shining into the circuit breakers in order to uh, see all the circuit breakers so during the flight if some circuit breaker will not pop up but basically on Boeing 737 we are not playing uh, with circuit breakers in, on, in flight uh, because QRH uh, doesn't set uh, to positive circuit breaker and so on and so on uh, it's, it's just the maintenance personnel and regarding the circuit breakers um, strictly they are not allowed to use the circuit breakers of fuel pumps during the flights okay so this is the circuit breaker float light now we have panel float light panel float light um, as you can see uh, it's shining from the background uh, just to see uh, what switch uh, is for uh, because if I turn the dome light off now you can see, uh, okay, this is the ground power, this is aft pump, and so on and so on. If I, if I leave it off, 
how we can basically see nothing and uh, that's not good uh, situation for us any anyway so uh, I will skip this and uh, mm, I will make an instruction uh, later on so uh, we are coming to Vienna for example in flight level 250 wind is 600 feet that's okay uh, <coughs> put the fly director switch is um, we can make it from runway 24 so 240 so 241 is set and now we are going to the part uh, which is basically for pilots uh, most important uh, we have main panel uh, this is the same uh, as the uh, as the brightness of the overhead panel uh, this is the main panel it's uh, always uh, related to captain uh, so that means the captain it's uh, um, uh, it's illuminated uh, this main panel uh, all these lights and also illuminating uh, this uh, MCP and AFIS panel because uh, if we put the dome light switch to on posi off position and as you can see if I put it into off position you cannot see the MCP lighting so you don't have uh, the information what is V now, what is L now and so on so uh, this is the main panel now we have a background uh, float float lights uh, if you like it um, uh, uh, like now it's okay it's up to you and because this is this um, this is the illuminated uh, as you can see the lights right over there so um, that's basically float lights and these lights are as well uh, below the glare shield uh, so it illuminates uh, and make a float light uh, into your uh, mode control panel okay and now uh, we have uh, upper view lower view so that means that with this these knobs uh, we are adjusting the brightness of the uh, upper display unit and as well uh, lower this lower display unit uh, as you can see right now okay and now we have outboard view, inboard view. And this is a little bit confusion because with this this is primary flight display indication, this is navigation display indications. But uh, the guys from from Boeing called it upper uh, outboard view and inboard view. Uh, this little switch which is inside uh, or little a little knob, I say uh, it wrong. Uh, it's because uh, you you could have uh, the brightness uh, fully in the dim position, and there is a thunderstorm activity with the weather radar, and it should be shining so much, so you can adjust it as well. Uh, now you can adjust the FMC with these knobs, and uh, you can as well adjust the brightness of the standby instruments uh, as you can see and exactly same procedure is applying uh, into uh, into first officer panel okay so um, I will not discuss clock because it's not modeled right over here and now we are going to float lights and as you can see right now um, I will do it like this way uh, it, it's shining from uh, <coughs> from uh, uh, from the apron but anyway okay so the first is the float lights uh, the float lights as you can see uh, will shine all the instruments but what is important now uh, it's important this light uh, this light is brightening uh, all your instruments it is brightening um, for example uh, with the main panel or on the overhead panel right now uh, and why is it important because uh, you have imagine we are on watson frequency one to two decimal eight 
okay and we have uh, this knob illuminated that's why that we are transmitting on one two to decimal eight but in real airplane uh, we put on stand on VHF2 on stands on standby frequency emergency broadcast services one to one decimal five okay so and this one to one decimal five frequency is just the receiving frequency uh, so uh, if you do not press this knob like this one uh, and you can see uh, there is illuminated only the knob when uh, is uh, those knobs when are pressed uh, so uh, if I press uh, this VHF2 knobs uh, this means that we are not allowed to broadcast on VHF number 2 but we are we are just receiving the messages uh, or listening on the frequency of VHF2. If you are identified the ILS frequency with Morse code during the ILS approach, uh, you can switch it on and you can easily switch uh, it is on. Uh, because sometimes people forget to put uh, it off and it's uh, annoying sound and it's not good to have it. So uh, it easily uh, can. Uh, uh, realize okay ah this is not I forget so I put it uh, into the off position so uh, those are the cockpit lights and uh, now we prepare our airplane uh, for uh, for uh, uh, flight to Vienna airport and uh, as I said before uh, we will see if it is works uh, or if it not works, uh, I will reposition myself and uh, uh, we'll see. It's 10 number 28, it's 10 number 28, it's a little bit dis discrepancy, discrepancy between last position and this position, but um, uh, anyway, it's should be okay. Uh, up at, uh, uh, we put it a uh, very simple way. Uh, we just uh, pick up the points and uh, make an ac active uh, here in Wien. Uh, we can put Uh, we can put, for example, a runway to Niner, so um, approach uh, should be via uh, Mikov. Uh, and the uh, transition will be via Toka. So, uh, Mikov 7 Whiskey and... Uh, Toka uh, ILS runway to Nevener and as we have Toka transition so uh, it's Mabot transition uh, Mabot 5 mic transition and we can scroll it down uh, just to see if everything is okay uh, well prepared uh, from Vojice, yes, I ex expected uh, Mikov, Balad. Uh, okay, runway to Niner, that's okay, that's perfect. So uh, we can uh, put Mikov like this one, and that's okay. So uh, performance calculations, uh, as I said before, we have 5000 feet mm, and flight level to 50. Uh, that's okay, cost index, imagine 35, uh, Budapest is right over there, uh, zero fuel we have uh, already uh, right over there, so that's perfect. Uh, and 
and uh, we are repositioning flight so we don't need uh, such full thrust so flaps one will be enough for us uh, stream, trim setting is valid for us so that's basically no problem and acceleration altitude will be 3000 feet and that's it uh, basically so 135 135 that's okay so we have everything uh, set up uh, um, via the FMC uh, so what you can do uh, now uh, as we have airplane prepared uh, we will now discuss uh, the overhead panel lighting system okay so first of all uh, this switch is should be on the ground uh, while airplane is parking all off okay and uh, regarding the logo lights which uh, we always use logo lights uh, from the uh, from the mm, from the ground up to flight level 100 then we turn it off and while we are descending at flight level 100 we put the logo light on so we put the logo light on and as you can see from behind the logo light is shining this is this is, this is the light and it's shining uh, into our fin or the or vertical stabilizer um, but there is one tricky situation what I would like to point out if you if you put the cabin utility switch to off position uh, the logo light uh, shouldn't uh, be illuminated as you can see right now it's not illuminated so this switch uh, are related uh, each one together uh, the next point is position light. Um, position light, uh, it's uh, let's, let's say uh, we can call it uh, navigation light and it has three positions, steady off and strobe and steady. Uh, what does it mean when it's steady? Mm, I would like to s show you with my uh, poor uh, skills uh, of uh, drone controlling, but uh, anyway uh if you, if you look at here uh this is the positioning light and the positioning light um with the airplane uh it should be into configuration the early engines as and as well the classics uh have the position light uh which is only one so if uh, there um, it's a failure of of the light and it's night conditions and you don't have the spare parts that means that there is no go item you shouldn't uh, allow to take off but in newest airplane uh, it should be two lights and it's one is in operative uh, you can easily go uh, with dispatch uh, um, from Mel but uh, uh yeah you can easily go uh but there is uh, written on the mail that it should be repaired within some calendar days or, or something like that okay but anyway uh so so this is uh the mm, uh the let's say uh pos position lights and uh and now you can see from behind uh we have o as well uh the lights which are illuminated uh, 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 illuminated uh, light and uh, illuminated white and uh, um, uh, how are the airplane configured like this this one uh, it's because if you can see the airplane if you can see airplane uh, on the skies and uh, it uh, and you can see the white light and red light that means that airplane is going far away from you and it's going uh, from the right to the left side okay if you see the white light and uh, green light uh, you can see uh, then the airplane is going uh, mm, out of your direction and it's going uh, from the left to, to the right side so it's the basics uh, it's the basics explanation of the light 
uh, now I'll, I will jump to the cockpit and uh, uh, let's say uh, that okay uh, this is the position light the position light and logo light should be always when captain are performing a walk around uh, the steady light the stead the the strobe and steady lights are using uh, if we are crossing the runway no matter if it is an active runway or non-active runway we always momentarily position the strobe and steady light to strobe and steady uh, if we are on the taxiway and we are subject uh, to take off clearance uh, we can put easily strobe and steady light on the taxiway and we can continue and depart if we are not subjected uh, to flight clearance uh, if we are uh, just lining up the runway and wait uh, we have to uh, put the position light to strobe and steady because uh, we are on active runway and we are waiting for the clearance anti-collision lights there is nothing to explain because uh, all of the people know that uh, if anti-collision lights is set to on position that means that all uh, ground personnel are aware of the hazard that we are going to start the engines and they need to move out of the airplane and now there is the wing lights uh, what is the wing lights now uh, wing lights uh, it's uh, illuminating illuminating uh, as you can see uh, is this is this light and it's shining all the leading edge device uh, let's see slots okay and it's uh, mm, it has two functions one function is uh, for the captain walk around another function is as you can see uh, we have the battery here okay uh, this battery this battery is magnetic uh, here is magnetic you can put it down magnetic and this knob you can adjust the brightness and with this small knob uh, if you press this, this, this small knob uh, you momentarily uh, switch on the light and uh, the purpose is uh, to check the wipers if there is ice accumulated there is the high highest probability that we have a leading edge device covered by ice or snow and we need to use the engine anti-ice like this one okay i will move to the to the co-pilot side and uh, mm, if we are using uh, not battery but the uh, wing lights uh, in a real airplane you should see the leading edge device uh, like now uh, if you see the leading edge device or let's say slot is gray it's okay but if it is white that means that it's covered by snow or by ice and we have to use uh, we have to use the wing lights uh, you can easily see uh, how it is uh, spreading out and popping out the snow and ice and uh, once uh, the slots are uh, not covered by eyes there there the the color is again a uh, gray uh, so in this case uh, we can put the wing lights to off position and uh, and we will uh, and this is the procedure how we constantly uh, checking uh, the uh, the, um, the condition of the wing uh, during the icing conditions okay and now we have the last light uh, which is a uh, will well lights okay uh, this is only for purpose of the captain walk around because he switch on and he will go uh, throughout uh, mm, f throughout uh, the main uh, gear compartment uh, as you can see here uh, it's shining a little bit because uh, we have uh, high intensity lights on the apron so it's hard to see but it's shining over here but be aware of the fact that this this light this light will well light uh, should be uh, switched uh, uh, in the wheel well compartment as well why uh, because maintenance personnel uh, um, uh, for comfort of maintenance personnel uh, it means that uh, he will not go uh, every time to the cockpit and light it up and then go down and perform at nice actions uh, then switch it off and so on and so on he can easily approach the wheel well uh, base compartment uh, switch on the light 
and uh, just perform the maintenance action whatever he's liking okay so uh, this was the light explanation and right and right uh, i'm trying to focus uh to uh to um to let's say uh okay uh, uh i forget to mention about two lights uh one light is this one and uh, this light is shining right over here uh, you can uh, um, you can move it with uh, and it's shining into the, your control column if you have you, as you can see you have the clipboard and you can have some documentations during the flight so uh, you can make some bureaucracy like OFP journey tech log and whatever uh, safety reports and as well uh, and blah 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 and this is the chart light as you can see it's it's illuminating uh it's hard to see because maybe it will it will be better mm, to see it on this side okay as you can see it's illuminating uh and it is the chart lights uh it's come from history because in history we don't have the electronic flight back put it he here and uh we are putting here paper 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 Jefferson charts but anyway it's still uh, the lamp it's still over there and uh, mm, mm, if you don't have the electronic flight bike for example uh, the copilot electronic flight bike is broken you can easily put OFP on or whatever paper you would like uh, the light is uh, uh, right over here but in PMDG is modeled here so it's option from option and these are the headsets but anyway this is uh, for another discussion so this was the explanation of the cockpit lights and and, and uh, let's jump and uh, try, to f try to make some takeoff and, and uh, we will discuss uh, mm, uh, the lighting uh, uh, during the taxi, okay. Uh, so, <sighs> that's okay. It's fine. We are going to start the engines. It's perfect, and uh, we are trying to perform the. Uh, the pushback but I don't think that uh, uh, it, it will it, it will works for us uh, I, I, I don't guess so Okay, we have engine start procedure already completed, so we may start the engine number two. Can start the block time. distance to taxi line 20 feet but it doesn't work for me okay uh, now don't focus on the procedures uh, because I will skip some procedures uh, because uh, we are mainly focusing uh, to uh, Okay, it doesn't work, so we stop. Uh, we put the fuel truck uh, into off position, uh, return services, and set the chokes on. Uh, we have.
Okay, now see that we had a problem because the control column doesn't work uh, for us, so it should be a problem. But uh, we have uh, system A direct uh, pump switch is off, so uh, we'll see if it is work uh, with system A direct pump switch is on. It should work anyway, because otherwise, if you have uh, if you don't have the system A direct pump switch is on. Uh, you cannot steer the airplane until you put the alternate switch. Okay, mm. so it's okay. It's fine. System air hydraulic pump switch is on. And now uh, I will see, okay, the rudder pedal are moving, so we are lucky and uh, we, can, uh, we can easily go. But uh, before I will remove the chokes, uh, I need to do this procedure because sometimes uh, uh, the nozzle steering is not working or not responding, or not, or not responding uh, into my liking, okay? Uh, so this we have, uh, so APU switch off, uh, we can uh, blank the lower display, we need recall, everything is ok, fine, uh, parking brake is released, and uh, I, will, I will just uh, move into the taxiway, and then I will uh, And then, then I will show you uh, which taxiways and why are we using uh, uh, for taxi. Uh, because I saw m most of the people put it like uh, this and that, and and and, and mixing the switches uh, all around, and it's not a good procedure. Okay, so I will stop the airplane right now on the taxiway. So uh, now. Uh, if you are going to make a taxi, even if it is day or uh, night conditions, we always put the taxi light. If you put the taxi light, uh, as you can see, the taxi light is located uh, on the main wheel well and it's turning with turning your uh, uh, with turning your wheel well. Okay, the taxi light is called taxi because you are using it for taxi. Okay, uh, it has to be switched on during day conditions and night conditions as well. Runway turn off light as well. We are um, we are using them uh, no matter if it is day or if it is uh, light conditions. And these three switches are using for taxi. Why turn uh, turn off lights? Turn off lights uh, has uh, some specific reason, and one of the reason uh, once we establish it in uh, my previous company, it um, was uh, that um, uh, uh, that there is some alert or let's say uh, better visibility during day and night as well. Uh, in order to see that, that the airplane is coming from left or li right side, uh, please pay attention. Another reason is, for example, if you reject the takeoff and uh, you make it out uh, from act from leaving active runway, uh, and uh, you have taxi uh, turn off lights uh, switch already on and prepare for the next taxiway, or uh, let's say to let another airplane know that hey, uh, this guy was performing reject takeoff uh, and stop the airplane to, to do not mm, crash into you, to, to themselves. Uh, during, um, mm, uh, during for example uh, approach, uh, we are the, the same procedure applies, but there is one additional thing that as we are coming to Vienna, uh, there are uh, rapid exit ways. And the rapid exit ways are constructed for 30 and 60 nodes approximately, um, I guess so. Uh, the number may differ, but um, I guess it is 30 and 60 nodes. And uh, in order, uh, if you would like to 
uh, not stop the airplane on the active runway because you have uh, two and a half nautical miles another airplane another airplane another airplane uh, you have to leave the, the active runway as soon as possible and these lights are shining with the angle uh, to the sides as you can see uh, these are uh, the turn of lights and they are shining with the angle so uh, uh, while you are, when you are using the rapid exit uh, exit way uh, you can see uh, on the left and right side uh, for example the sign markings uh, okay we are exiting Bravo 9 and uh, leaving uh, active runway of uh, for example to two nine so that's another reason why we are using uh, uh, on the turn the turn of the turn of lights um, during uh, taxi and uh, during takeoff and during the la landing uh, up to flight level 100 again after flight level 100 we per we turn them off okay um, so this is uh, this is the explanation of runway turn of lights now we have uh, landing lights and landing lights are divided into fixed and retractable fixed lights we are using uh, during daylight only because uh, these are these lights okay this and 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 these lights are using during daylight only up to flight level 100 and below flight level 100 until leaving the active runway or when entering the active runway uh, because uh, in order uh, to let the other traffic that uh, another traffic is commencing takeoff or commencing approach um, and they have uh, as as they are located on the wing route uh, there is no penalty to use them uh, retractable lights mm, now I will uh, make a little bit mess up with the weather and uh, uh, retractable landing lights has, has three position uh, this position uh, in the middle uh, has the functionality uh, that uh, uh, you can see uh, it will goes uh, mm, it will retract okay and the retraction of the retractable or let's say on uh, Classics outboard lights uh, has to be in any any speed, in any speed, and uh, when you put uh, it, uh, let's say, uh, into the uh, into into the last position, uh, so they are shining, uh, and we are using it at the night operational only uh, because uh, as they are retracted uh, they have a fuel penalty and uh, it uh, it makes no sense to use them uh, during daylight conditions okay but during night conditions uh, we are uh, uh, extend uh, the lights uh while we are entering the runway and retract it just after when after takeoff uh, checklist is finished and uh, uh, we retract them on the approach when 500 feet about aerodrome elevation if the conditions is not met uh, and uh, you have tricky approach uh, you can ret um, extend it uh, anytime you wish and you wish it's safe to do so uh, because you are busy uh, and again uh, um, these lights uh, are using at night because they provide us uh, high intensity light systems uh, while performing uh, night procedures uh, so uh, that's why uh, we are using these lights okay so for for the time being uh, we can switch it off and we will taxi it uh, like this way and uh, and okay one 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 more thing I would like to point out uh, if we are uh, going to set up aircraft equipment uh, then you can see that uh, we have the option uh, which is uh, which is uh, related to 
uh, LED light system. Uh, LED light system it's uh, 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 it's most common on Max airplanes and engines which are manufactured uh, after a uh, year 2000 I guess uh, 15 and it has uh, mm, uh, more advantages because uh, they have uh, better shining, uh, better high intensity uh, they have uh, less fuel penalty and uh, uh, they are uh, not, s not so many time broke and uh, you don't need uh, to have so many spare parts in order to replace the lights uh, all the time so that's the, that's the benefit and there is one exception uh, regarding to these lights uh, uh, as we don't have the retractable lights that are only situated on the wing route but uh, as you can see on the wing route uh, we have as well the taxi light uh, the taxi light is situated as well in the wing route as you can as you can see right now this is the taxi light uh, because uh, the taxi lights on the nose wheel it's no longer presented uh, since this situation okay so uh, I hope it was clear enough and finally uh, we can uh, uh, perform uh, our departure to Vienna Airport Okay, well, I will switch this light off to off position. Put the flaps to one position it's not working the switch now it's now it's going okay sometimes I need to press the twice uh. <coughs> but we will realize uh, easily with uh, take off configuration warning sound anyway
So, uh, now we are approaching to category 3 holding point, uh, which we can skip because there are no low visibility procedures and we stop our position uh, into alpha uh, which is uh, category 1 position, ok? So, we, s we hold position right now. Now we can set the parking brake uh, without any further problems. Uh, so, uh, now we will perform the lineup procedure and once again, uh, now in this situation, uh, if it is daylight conditions, uh, we put taxi light into off position because we are no longer taxiing. Realize it, please. Uh, we are taking off, okay? So we don't need to have the taxi light on position. If it is daylight conditions, we just put the fixed light on. But if it is a uh, night condition, uh, we put uh, taxi and retractable lights as well, as you can see right now. And just after departure, when ch uh, when after take of checklist is completed, uh, we can put the retractable lights uh, back to off position in order to save the fuel and don't don't have the fuel penalties, and uh, there is no need it. Uh, to have the lights uh, on uh, because we are out of the critical phase of the flight, ok? And now uh, we can put the strobe lights to steady uh, because we are entering the active, the active runway and we are subject uh, of uh, takeoff clearance. So I put as high as, uh, very very high uh, low visibility procedure <laughs> right now, but uh, anyway we can manage it uh, without any problems, any further problems. Can put just well now for our departure. So uh, okay, uh, let the engine stable. Okay, take off. Uh, we have N one Toga. Now we have 18 knots cross checked. Okay, rotate. Positive red gear up. Okay, we can put autopilot engaged. And command MCP speed. And uh, initial climb clearance in Prague is 5,000 feet for our purposes. I will put uh, 10,000 feet, uh, just not disturbing you in uh, my dis explanation, okay? Uh, so, uh, we are approaching acceleration altitude, so uh, we can put uh, flaps up. Now we are out of the clouds, that's perfect. It flips up. Transition, standard, altimeter set and cross check, that's fine. Ok, we have flaps up no light, we could put it into the V now, like this one, we can perform after take of checklist, when after take of checklist is complete, uh, we retract these lights, ok, and I will help myself, so put the lights off, and uh, that's it. So, uh, this was the outboard lights or let's say retractable lights, ok? Uh, so we have to uh, use it only uh, while during takeoff and short and short approach uh, 
in order uh, for our better view and reducing the fuel penalty because it doesn't make sense uh, to leave it like uh, uh, like somebody leave it uh, until uh, flight level or whatever okay it, it makes no sense but for the bird activity and activity of the, of the other airplanes the fixed light should be on up to flight level 100 okay so assuming uh, we are going to flight level uh, I put there uh, 250 okay so we have flight level 250 we have flight level 100 that's quite perfect and now uh, as we are at flight level 200 uh, all these lights, fixed lights and turn off lights are coming off and uh, logo light off. If it is day conditions, uh, we just skip the logo light because it's off, it's already in off position. Okay, and now we are uh, fully okay, uh, we are established. Uh, so, mm, we need 600. Okay, that's my fault, my bad. Okay, anyway, uh, we can prepare for a uh, wind approach. Uh, as we are going from Miko, we should have flight levels uh, 170 or below, uh, between um, uh, between these two uh, UTC times, uh, or not, it's UTC, it's local time, between uh, 5.30 and... Uh, um, approximately midnight condition uh, so uh, there we are going to Mabot and from Mabot uh, we are performing the Mabot transition uh, so uh, we can put uh, the approach of runway ILS to Niner because uh, we are on flight team we are not uh, currently on WhatsApp and we can uh, we can choose uh, the runway for our liking, but in Win Airport the most configuration is a runway 2 niner, uh, then a runway 34, and uh, the third runway is 16, and last solution is runway 11, uh, as I remember. Uh, so we have curses of uh, 291. 291 and uh, 109.55 and this approach procedure is directly to FisherMet VOR which is 10 110 decimal 4, 110 decimal 4 is already there and we have some NDB 408 uh, so 4 08 like this one so that's perfect and um, auto brake put on 2 uh, even if it is a uh, big airport, uh, I will recommend it to out put out the brake on two because uh, uh, the in the wind airport uh, there are some specialties. For example, do not use the APU when it is not necessary, and uh, do not use the thrust drivers idle than idle detent position. Okay. Uh, so anyway, but uh, we have everything set and uh, what we can do the next uh, uh, it just go uh, make of 7 whiskey uh, we check uh, if there is any speed restriction altitude restriction we have uh, that there is some uh, altitude restriction uh, but uh, anyway uh, Miko flight level uh, 170 so we can put uh, for example uh, I guess transition level 1 to 0 uh, it's just an e example uh, don't take it serious uh, Queen Edge is 103 because we have default weather but if you don't have default weather we be precise 
uh, with this number and uh, what next uh, uh, we delete for example uh, our uh, restriction uh, now we are at flight level 2501000 to level off vertical speed 1000 feet per minute in order to avoid the resolution advisory if it is traffic above and uh, <coughs> uh, put 7 8 or uh, slash 300 for example and uh, now uh, what we can do uh, we can put it into the plan mode as well can leave it like this one and uh, we can uh, for example put from this FMC page uh, runway to Niner and uh, this runway to Niner uh, it's es essential or let's say uh, for situational awareness we put 10 miles that means that uh, we should be within 10 miles uh, at least on clean configuration or some pilots tell that uh, with the flaps 5 configuration it's a matter of the people but anyway uh, if you are trying to decelerate the airplane remember one thing uh, each 10 knots uh, means uh, uh, that you are using um, uh, one nautical mile uh, so if I put uh, if we are uh, descending with 300 uh, knots so that means uh, at 30 uh, nautical miles uh, which we should start decelerate but anyway uh, what uh, the wind air traffic controller in real life like to do uh, they like to do uh, when they see the gap between uh, two airplanes they they are trying to put you uh, within this gap and get rid of you um, and this is uh, this situation it's a little bit tricky because as you can see uh, we have uh, uh, as I said, said Mabot Mabot yes it's what Mabot uh, Mabot transition uh, and as you can see uh, from picture over here uh, whiskey whiskey niner five niner which is this one uh, they would like to send us directly uh, somewhere over here uh, beyond uh, the final approach point uh, so uh, as we have restrictions we cannot broke the rules and delete this re altitude restriction well but what we can do uh, in this situation is put whiskey whiskey niner five niner uh, and the speed restrictions right over here whiskey whiskey niner five niner we have and we can put the on the for example uh, 210 uh, speed and now if we have the speed 210 and he just turn us and from 6000 to 3000 feet which is right over here we need to lose 3000 feet of altitude so in in quite short direction but if we have uh, a low speed uh, we can put higher flap settings and we can go down higher so uh, that's the basic preparation for, for Vienna airport and, uh, um, and that's it and now uh, we can check the charts for example and uh, we can see that uh, uh, for example uh, we have um, arrival condition and as you can see for runway 29 medium airplane uh, should vacate via alpha 7 okay so alpha 7 it's right over here so we try to uh, make it somehow via alpha 7 and that's why we are using in real life uh, runway turn of lights uh, in order uh, just to see that hey this is alpha 7 make it a little bit right away uh, so uh, so this is the purpose uh <coughs> 
uh, of the runway turn of lights. Uh, but anyway, I guess it was flight level 170, so we can put the flight level 170. Uh, we have recall checked, uh, holding fuel available, we have plenty of fuel, so <coughs> I don't think we have the problem with fuel. Uh, we have for one hour holding. So we are on change over, yeah, we have 280 and we should have 300, so we will put it like now. And uh, there is some special procedure uh, during the thunderstorm activity around the airport. Uh, the pilots are wearing sunglasses. It's because the um, because the lights uh, which are coming from the thunderstorm activity cloud, which is cumulon nimbus, are um, mm, uh, with so high intensity that uh, the mm, that you can blind uh, the pilots and uh, for some time, for a short time, and you are unacceptable to fly the airplane which broke basic basic rules, aviate, navigate and communicate and do the checklist. Okay, and now this is what I was talking about, that we have inner knob, uh, I don't know if it is working on PMDG to adjust uh, um, this a little bit uh, much more bright then, uh, so uh, you can uh, leave it like this one and you can see that uh, it's not shining as well, so mm, it's basically okay. What I am really mad of the clocks, uh, I don't know uh, if it is so hard to, um, to put these knobs and adjust the brightness of the clocks, I don't know why and what's the purpose. not working anymore but anyway okay we are approaching the glide path so we can put it to level change and once again if you want to share uh, about your approach uh, if it is correctly done and correctly set up just go to any ref page you can see IELTS frequency 109.55 109.55 on both sides and you can see final approach uh, course 291 2901 and basically um, that's it but what I forget to put um, we are going to burn 600 of fuel so that means uh, 48.4 and we should use the flaps for 30 and 1 to 7 plus 5 notes is 132 So 132 is right over there and uh, I forget to put the minimums as well because uh, uh, I am explaining uh, too much and minimums for category 1 ILS it's 800 feet so uh, we can put 800 over there. Ok, 
Okay, so we have 800 feet recall, everything is checked, so we are good to go basically. Uh, we can uh, put the fasten belts to on position, again I can see nothing, so fasten belts on. And now it's okay, and we can go to 6000 feet, uh, which is the uh, lowest altitude uh, we are ever. Um, can go uh, uh, if you are mm, uh, performing landing uh, the best solution or best, best setting is a pallet flying as approach reference sites and I will give you a tip uh, your uh, actual gross weight is your N1 and if you keep the actual gross weight and uh, for example actual gross weight is 48.4 so if you are keeping the thrust on 48.4 decimal four, uh, you will keep your speed uh, constantly and, and uh, uh, it works uh, really well with 737-700 but on 800 it's not valid ok so it's valid only on 700 So, uh, according to situational awareness, uh, most of the airports has um, uh, 160 up to 4 DME. So what we can do, uh, we can put 4 DME as well here. There are some captains and uh, mm, they tell the only unprofessional pilots are um, putting uh, all the information into the fixed page and so on and, and radio now so we don't need them because we are machos and everything but um, I will tell you no no it's not uh, true because uh, as I said before uh, once uh, it happens to me in Bergamo airport that uh, we have some troubles uh, with Elnav, uh, Elnav suddenly disappeared just after departure and I was uh, pretty happy that I put uh, all the departure because it was conventional departure I was pretty happy uh, to put the mm, the fix into the fixed page uh, all the routing and uh, I'm departing via heading and at approximately 6000 feet uh, L now appears again so we don't have the trouble but imagine that uh, your navigation display suddenly disappears so um, uh, so uh, once again and uh, I will I will be telling to you uh, all the times uh, as much as information is possible please put it over there okay so right now we are approaching flight level 100 again I will help with the lights what are we going to do uh, in daylight conditions uh, basically here nothing in night conditions as are approaching uh, 10,000 feet sorry because we are on QNH uh, we put the logo light and we put the, we put the turn off light and fix lights okay so uh, this is valid uh, for the night condition. In daylight conditions, we skip the logo lights. Okay. And uh, if somebody is complaining that I'm using uh, 
mm, for example um, uh, just one just one or two pictures uh, from external web page uh, just let me know and I will remove it uh, from the video uh, but uh, anyway uh, I will be happy if the author of this picture is not mad about me uh, because uh, for my explanation it's uh, it's a good example and I really appreciate and I really like uh, uh, those pictures so um, I am apologizing as well so mm. okay we can see if we can see something uh, with the wing lights yeah we can see something is shining right over here uh, that's okay uh, this should be uh, from the uh, turn of light so if you put the turn of light uh, on the left side off uh, yeah we can see it anymore uh, well but if we put it like this one uh, we shouldn't see anything uh, maybe it is from wing lights yeah it's f it was from wing lights uh, so it's my fault Okay, anyway, we should have 6000 at or above, but uh, we are exactly at 6000 feet and uh, it's because uh, mm, because we would like to decelerate uh, and uh, to have a uh, clean configuration uh, within this waypoint, which is Whiskey Whiskey Niner 5 Niner Okay, we can go directly to this waypoint, Whiskey Whiskey Niner 5 Niner Uh, as you can see, the VNAV uh, bar pole is showing us that we are 11,000 below, but uh, be aware of the fact that it is all the snake, okay? So, uh, if I if we put the chart and we put the Mabot, uh, or what was it, Mikov 7 Whiskey? Mikov 7 Whiskey. As you can see, it, it's 6,000 at or above, okay? so he will constantly calculate it 6000 at or above and uh, then we are going uh, through the mabot point and uh, from mabot point uh, which one was there uh, it's all the snake right right ar around um, so he's calculating if I put hard uh, constraint on whiskey whiskey niner five niner it does it means that uh, will be uh, quite okay on profile so I can make it uh, like this way okay I'm put 6000 feet right over here and now boom uh, you can see that we are 4000 feet below not 10,000 below uh, because he's uh, strictly uh, adjusting my altitude uh, on this waypoint but anyway we may start to decelerating okay so uh, decelerate is uh, approximately uh, I guess uh, 220 uh, we put it like there and we can see uh, where is our up speed position okay 
and we are preparing uh, for shortcut so uh, we'll prepare 3000 feet okay So as you can see, uh, as we are doing the ferry flight or let's say repositioning flight, um, our clean speed is much more lower. So um, if air traffic controllers, uh, air traffic controller should give us speed to three zero, for example. Okay, so let's say to three zero, and leave the speed. Okay, because uh, there are the airplanes behind you, and I don't want to decelerate them as well so uh, keep speed to 30 okay so from this point uh, we are going directly to this point okay and 230 it's more or less okay because within 230 as you can see the flat placard over here uh, speed 5 is 250 but uh, be aware of the fact that that's uh, speed 250 uh, it's a it's uh, wallet uh, with the uh, limitation of G limit point uh, so that means that uh, you are not allowed to do the mm, let's say uh, steep turns or, or whatever it's uh, very easily set And always, when when uh, when you are entering the clouds, uh, be aware of the fact that uh, watch the temperature, watch the total air temperature. If total air temperature it's min it's uh, lower than 10 degrees of centigrade, uh, you have to use the engine anti-s. Don't forget to put to uh, um, mm, to do this. Okay. <coughs> So we should have Vienna Airport somewhere over here, um, but we cannot see it because I put uh, <laughs> I put nearly low visibility conditions, uh, <laughs> not category one air mm, uh, condition, but uh, yep, mm, maybe we can adjust it a little bit more uh, in order to. Like now, maybe uh, it should be fine. Okay, so do not forget to uh, always uh, when you are turning into the direction the heading back. Okay, and now the air traffic control says us, uh, are you able to whisky whisky nine or five one? Yes, we are able whisky whisky nine or five one. So put whisky whisky nine or five one right over here, and now we may start the turn and we may start uh, to decelerating with the flaps one flaps two we will see how the airplane is decelerating it's not decelerating flaps one it's okay and put the speed brakes in order to catch the glide slope and press the level change As you can see, we are high above the profile, uh, but um, it's uh, not so bad uh, uh, because I'm explaining and I, I forget to put the level change uh, mode, uh, so uh, it's my my fault, my bad. Uh, 
apologize. Always when flying uh, ILS put it into the heading select and VOR. Okay. And now you as you can see we are approaching uh, the glide path. Okay. So uh, we can stall the speed brakes because we don't need to use them anymore. And we can see how the airplane will handle this situation because we are 10 nautical miles uh, which are far away from the airport. So it's basically no problem. Approach mode is approach uh, heading, it's 291. Well, we have glide slope captured, miss approach altitude is 5000 feet. We have set. So it's OK and we can uh, put the speed uh, into 170 indicated. And believe me, uh, for me as a, as a real captain, it's hard to uh, um, fly without a co-pilot. Uh, and to, to have the, his guidance that, uh, hey captain, uh, this is our rapid taxi way, uh, and uh, we should uh, uh, we should make it uh, like this way. So uh, please disregard if I am slow on the runway. Okay, so 140 up, up to uh, 160 up to 40 ME, so we can put it into the flaps five, and uh, put non-standard flaps ten. Okay. And uh, be aware of the fact that speed brakes are only efficient uh, up to flaps 10. Beyond the flaps 10, the speed brakes are no longer efficient. However, they are approved, but they are not approved within limitations uh, beyond the flaps 15. Okay? And as we are uh, flying into the IMC conditions, uh, I would be happy, and it's it's crucial, it's mandatory, uh, due to standard operational procedure, uh, to be uh, stabilized and checklist completed. That means that we put gear down, we put flaps 15, we arm the speed brakes, uh, we put the engine start switches to continuous, and. Uh, And we are a little bit waiting uh, for the flip 30, it's 175. So uh, we can put flip 30 and the approach speed is 133. So uh, engine starts which is continuous, speed brake arm, landing gear down, uh, flip 30 green light. Uh, we have we have checked uh, within 1000 exactly. So uh, we were uh, really okay. So once again, pilot flying approach and pilot monitoring should, should should have the progress page because he see if there is a headwind or a crosswind from the left side uh, in order to um, let uh, the captain uh, know that uh, hey, this is the. Uh, you, ha you have a little bit more crosswind from the left side or you have crosswind from the right side or the headwind component increase so increase your approach speed and so on and so on and so on so uh, this is and now uh, we can uh, we are comfortable within 500, 500 feet so uh, we put the retractable landing lights for better view and now we can see the runway, so autopilot disengage. Um. Okay, guys, I'm back. Uh, my flight simulator again crashed to desktop. Uh, so uh, I need to uh, I need to put it back. Uh, <laughs> It's my fault, minimum landing. Okay, we are safely on the ground. Uh, reverse to idle detent, but I don't know how with my joystick configuration. 
and now as we are on the ground uh, the copilot tell us uh, which one uh, is the rapid uh, exit way uh, Alpha 7 is just the first uh, to the right side Uh, I will right now stop the on the um, mm, uh, the airplane, and I would like to figure out one thing. Uh, if I if I the uh, if I disengage the autopilot and deselect speed, it should be in R mode, which it wasn't. So I need to press uh, mm, uh, to disengage the auto throttle, which I am not comfortable with the situation. Uh, because uh, it has two reasons to have autopilot in arm in arm position. One is under speed protection, another is go around automatic go around uh, thrust setting. But uh, mm, I stay in this position in improper way. You shouldn't stay here. Uh, please be aware of the fact. But this is just for explanation. And as you can see from behind. Uh, now we can see uh, with the turn of lights uh, uh, the s runway or tax rapid taxiway surface uh, within the angle, and what we and this is what we expected uh, to see. So uh, we'll continue. We'll continue and uh, as we are, um, I'm taxing a little bit carefully, but with, with this ra rapid exit way, uh, you can taxi a much more higher speed. And as we are uh, beyond this point, mm, we chose us that uh, this is the this is the lineup point. Now what we can do, uh, again, uh, we can divide it into the daylight and nightlight condition conditions. In daylight condition, in night, in night conditions, uh, we put uh, mm, all the lights to off position. Okay. Uh, in daylight conditions, we put just the uh, fixed light to off position. A turn off light stay illuminated and taxi light should be on and strop and steady light uh, should be in this condition okay and now we are ready good to taxi and we are taxi to some stand uh, in which uh, I will show you uh, the speciality of uh, uh, win airport um, Uh, when we are not using uh, the ground power source, but uh, sorry, uh, APU source, but we are using ground power source, okay? So and in between. In these big airports, uh, be aware of the fact that you have to use the mod S or mod Charlie uh, in order to taxi uh, via apron.
Okay, we have some uh, some ambulance car. Uh, I did it in real life, in real life in uh, Vienna airport uh, once uh, when we have medical case on board. As we are not the Watsim, uh, we can make it via whiskey taxiway, I guess so, it is whiskey taxiway. Like this one. And we can go to the remote stand. Uh, I like the remote stands, um, because I flew for uh, very cheap companies. Or not very cheap companies, but uh, for most of the companies was low cost companies, uh, not the K KLM or uh, British Airways. Uh, so um, in this case, uh, I'm I'm get used uh, to use the uh, the stands uh, which are. Uh, not uh, not so exclusive. Okay, so uh, on the left part uh, there are Foxtrot stands and on the right par part uh, there are the, the hotel stands and uh, company I flew for uh, last time uh, we have Foxtrot or, go or golf stands uh, because uh, they are local stands. And as you can see, it divided into the green line and the red line. No, sorry, green light and blue line and uh, an orange line, and it's divided. Uh, the main purpose is to separate the traffic with wingspan of uh, 36 meters in order to. Um, uh, in order not to reduce the traffic uh, flow, uh, for example, one is uh, um, one airplane. It's uh, making uh, pushback, and another airplane is making uh, taxi to the stand. So, in order to avoid, so we pick up the hotel uh, 34, and uh, this is the reason. Uh, uh, always, uh, when you are uh, coming to the stand, uh, always put these lights uh, into off position. Okay. Maybe I don't, I didn't forget uh, to to tell you that uh, after leaving active runway, uh, put uh, from uh, strobe and steady to steady. But uh, it's another story. But anyway, uh, if you are coming to the stand. Uh, you are completely uh, uh, turn off all the lights because the apron has own lighting and you are not allowed to, to enter the apron without visual docking systems or marshaller on place. So uh, I will check it from outside and as you can see this stand is uh, valid for us uh, but we don't have the marshaller. Uh, right over there, so uh, imagine that we have, and uh, 
Oops. Oh, I'm sorry uh, for this condition. I'm not get used to, to press the mouse button and, and steer the airplane. Um, I think that Asobo should do something with it because it's uh, it's really annoying and understandable why. Okay, so once we are understand, uh, stop the airplane. We put the parking brake. We shut down the engine number two, and now. Uh, with the hand signal, uh, we tell the maintenance personnel that uh, we need the ground power. So, we put it like this one, wait, ground power is ok, in good quality, put it on bus, and now we can shut down the engine number 2. So, uh, that was a uh, short flight from Prague uh, to uh to Vienna and uh, I am deeply apologize for uh, for crashing the desktop uh, of my simulator but I don't know what is the reason and it happens uh, too much time maybe I have too many things into the community folder but I don't I don't I don't really know why and uh, what is the the uh, shutdown procedure uh, shutdown procedure uh, differs uh, uh, let's make uh, we can divide it into the captain and first officer captain is uh, putting the flight directors off and IS Mach window into 100 okay uh, the first officer is uh, stopping the block time uh, he will release the passengers uh, once the N1 is below 10% he put the anti-collision lights on if we are not on the APU so we can switch all of the pumps to off position electric uh, hydraulic pumps off uh, packs off uh, isolation valve to open position and we can switch off uh, uh, the IRSs and uh, put uh, the transponder to standby 2000 and basically perform shutdown checklist and now what is important what I said uh, before uh, to you that we need to perform the secure procedure and secure checklist and how it is look like uh, it looks like uh, very very simple way uh, for example uh, we release uh, uh, the ground power and now we are uh, the secure, secure procedure is IRS is off uh, emergency, uh, sorry, uh, cabin and utility power off, EFP pass off. Uh, this switch I will leave for a moment. Uh, window it off, packs off, and uh, if you are making, um, for example, overnight uh, within the winter conditions you will play with pressurization panel but this is uh, another story okay so now uh, we are good to go and we can switch on the battery but as I said before if you look at the outside view uh, if you leave it like now uh, your emergency exit light are illuminated and that's not the condition we want because it discharge our battery so please when you leave the airplane put emergency exit light to off, to off position and uh, now it's basically okay and emergency exit lights are not floating away so I hope you like this video much and again uh, if somebody is complaining from the picture I took from internet uh, because I don't have the source of information as I am not flying um, so much uh, so just let me know and I will delete it from there uh, if, if you have problem with it uh, I hope you like this video and uh, as again uh, the procedure with uh, deselecting speed uh, it's sometimes valid and sometimes not valid I don't know if it is PMDG bug or what but in a real airplane it should work 
anytime okay so have a nice day uh, have a great evening and see you next time soon bye